Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to do is it's a little freewheeling. I'm going to try to explain partial derivatives with respect to, well, not quite a real world example, but a pretend real world example, which is I'm thinking of, of a, of, of a factory where maybe here's the factory owner. Okay, and, and so this guy is, has to decide uh, has to decide what uh, he he can, and I'll just use the L. I'll, I'll abuse notation. I'll just use L for the labor expenditure, the amount of money that he spends on labor, and K for the capital expenditure. And he knows that that there's a function of two variables: labor expense, capital expenditure. Which, if he puts in a certain uh, labor expense, certain capital expenditure, he'll get a certain output from the factory the output, whatever the output of the factory is. So he gets he gets an output from the thing and, and you know the output is a function of these two variables. Now what he's trying to figure out is he's trying to understand how if he changes the labor input and the cap the in, the expansion labor and expansion capital how how does the output change? So he's just trying to understand this. And so, so he's trying to understand this. And one way he can think about it is he can think about it using partial derivatives. So I'm going to write a bunch of partial derivatives. And then we are going to try to figure out what he may mean by looking at these, these partial derivatives. Write all the third order partial. I like these two mixed partials together for a good reason. Okay, so let's look at the at the at the first one. F sub L of L comma K. What uh, what does the what does this tell us? Hmm? What does it tell us? Uh so so how your investment in K constant, hmm. uh, how the change of L affects your output. Affects this guy's output. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so uh, what what he may do is, he, yeah, he's saying, if I increase labor expenditure, and, and I'm assuming that he has, like for any actual numerical values of these, he has like an idea of how, what exactly he's going to do. Maybe if L, given the amount of L that he decides, like, so I'm I'm not going into like how exactly he allocates. So I'm I'm treating that as a black box. If he if he margin changes the labor expenditure at the margin, keeping the capital expenditure fixed, what is the what is the effect of that on output? So it's a it's a derivative of output of the output with respect to labor. Okay. What would it mean to say that this is positive? It means if you have more uh, labor, then your output will increase. Yeah. Okay, uh, so output increases in labor, right? What would it mean to say it's zero? It doesn't change. Output doesn't change. And what would it mean to say it's negative? Just things mm -hmm. get worse. Well, yeah. it's crowded. <laughs> Well, that's that's like your return explanation. Why that happened? Yeah, you, there could be many reasons. It right? could be like too many cooks spoil the bro. What's the saying? About too many cooks make things worse, or there are too many people inside. Maybe people get confused about who's doing what, or there's chaos, or maybe people start fighting each other, or whatever. But but there's some issue, and and so it could happen that that beyond a certain point. This now, so, so now it's, we're not really saying wh whether the sign is constant. It may happen in the beginning when there's no labor at all. Then it's likely that the labor exp that increasing labor increase. So if he just has, if he has this factory with a lot of machines and there's nobody inside to actually operate the machine, he probably could benefit by by expending a little on labor. Right? But once he's already got got people operating all the machines, then at some point it may be the case that the that the output actually starts going down if he get, keeps trying to get more and more people, right? Also, the actual like quality of laborers may go down if he, after he's hired all the best laborers, the people who are left may be the thugs and the, the kind of people who may steal and stuff. So, 
So at some point, you, you hit this thing. And we'll, we'll actually try to understand that using the second partial a little later. Now, F sub K, same story. Okay, so this way to capital. You can have equal to C. I won't write it down, but it's the same story, but now you have capital instead of labor. Okay, now what are these mixed partials and what are these second orders? See, these are really what... So in these, like, there's a reasonable predictability. In most cases, these signs will be positive in the constraints in which the factory owner is operating. And he'll, you, he'll rarely go to a situation where he's using so much labor and capital that a little more will decrease output. Usually he will be somewhere well within this situation. Right? Because he'll usually stop when the output has stopped increasing fast enough. So, so I mean, the signs of these will usually be positive. But these are the really interesting things. So what can you, what does this mean? What is this? What is this? The rate of change of L hold, how the rate of change of L holding K constant changes as K changes. Okay. So okay, so maybe maybe before we go on, we just introduce some terminology. What what would be the economic uh, economics in economics, what would you call these two things? Not sure that's the exact term, but but this would be called the it would be called the marginal product of labor holding capital content. It's a marginal. When when you see a word like marginal, always think of derivatives. Okay, and usually partial derivatives. So it's a marginal product of labor. I'm using marginal product just means at the margin. How does an increase in labor affect the product? Product meaning the output. And what's this called? The marginal product of capital. Okay, what are, what does a mixed partial tell you then? Mixed partial, as you said, it tells you how the marginal product of labor changes if you, with Change a slight change capital. in capital. What does this mixed partial tell you? How the marginal product of capital changes as labor Just changes. Now what, what does, now what does that result called Clairaut's theorem tell you? It tells you that these two numbers are equal. Under some continuity assumptions, these two numbers are equal. Equal at uh, the same point? Yeah, like they're equal as functions. So if you plug equal in the same inputs, then they'll give you the same output. What it's saying is the, the and this, it, this is not, this is, this is sort of, maybe it's intuitive, but it's it's intuitive only if you have the right intuition. It's not, it's not naturally so intuitive. It's saying that the, that the way in which capital affects the margin, the, the rate of change of the marginal product of labor, if you change capital, is the same as the rate of change of the marginal product of capital with respect to labor. Okay. It's not intuitive to me. Yeah, it's it's not quite, and actually it's not even true if they're not continuous functions. But but there's a there's an intuitive reason why it's sort of true. But so let's try to understand what it means to say that this is positive. Oh, some some little creature here likes calculus. Mm -hmm. uh, it's positive, zero, and negative. What would it mean to say it's positive? It means... It means if you add more machines, if you add more machines, then the value, then the marginal product of labor increases. Right? Mm -hmm. Which means if you add more machines, it becomes more valuable to hire more people or, or to pay them more or whatever. And what does this say? It says if you, if you, if you, if you hire more people, it becomes more valuable to get more machines. And you see now that these are sort of related, right? It's saying that if you get more of one, you want more of the other. But how can I, they, I understand their signs might yeah, be the, actual, the same, but yeah. the actual maximum. Well, for that, you have to actually like use the actual definitions. And, uh, so, but yeah, so it, it is a, now what, what, what's the right word for saying that labor and capital are the complementary inputs. This is not quite the same as the complementary goods you have for demand, but this is the complementary inputs to the production process. Right. 
So they are complementary inputs. What would be a situation where that's true? It's 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 like uh, it's like where the machines are not displacing the humans; they are uh, complementing the humans. The humans are good at one part of the task, and the machines are good at another part of the task. And so, when there's more machines, they need more humans to sort of do the other half of the task, and vice versa. What would it mean to say that it's equal to zero? I mean, uh, if we increase capital, it doesn't affect the marginal product of labor. Yeah. What kind of functions would have that property that the mixed partial is zero? Uh, separable. Uh, the additively separable one. What it's what it's intuitively saying is that the labor and capital don't interact, right? Labor. It's sort of like, so the additively separable one would be where labor produces something, capital produces something else, right? They don't talk to each other. And, and yeah. then the, and then this factory owner just gets the total output, right? So maybe he has some, a bunch of people who do, who do some one task and a bunch of uh, Machine. machines which also do the same task and then they just like pool their output. And so there's no interaction between labor and capital. That would be, this is, this is a no interaction. And that's an additively separable. Additively separable means you can write it as add this whole thing, right, as a function of labor plus another function of capital. What would it mean to say it's less than zero? That would mean that, what would it mean? They don't complement each other. Well, yeah, <laughs> but uh, they, you will say something. So they are, they, they are like these substitutes for each other. I mean, there could be other reasons. Maybe they actually fight each other, but... Uh, the, the typical reason would be that they substitute each other. Okay. So, so by like that, it, I mean that 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 when you add more cap machines, they they reduce the 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 marginal product of labor because the machines sort of take away some of the things that the people could have done, and so they reduce what how much the people can contribute, the labor can contribute. Okay. Okay, so that this is the now. Now we still have the 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 second order partial. What do the second order partials tell you? What does F sub L L tell you? The rate of change of the marginal product of labor. Yeah, and what does the sign of F sub L L tell you? So is it uh? If it is positive, it means it increases at a uh, increasing speed. The marginal product of labor. The marginal product increases, so the actual output increases at an increasing rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so what? What? What does that mean? It means you have uh, the the way you said is you have increasing returns on labor. It's not only just increasing; it's uh, increasing See. faster and faster. Yeah, so that's the that's the way people use increasing returns. Means not just that, that the output increases with labor, but it, it, it increases, the returns on labor increase, which just means that the, the, if you, it, the, the rate of increase actually increases. And increase, so that's if it's greater than zero. If it's less than zero, then you have? Decreasing returns. Yeah. And the same for the capital thing, except you have increasing returns on capital and decreasing returns on capital. Another way of, another way of saying increasing returns of labor is, you might say that labor is self-complementary. What do I mean by that? It's sort of like using the language of mixed partials for pure partials. So what do I mean by that? So, so if you think of this expenditure on labor as hiring more people, right? It's like asking whether, uh, whether a new, po each new person increases the value of existing people or whether each, the, so if I hire like one new person, does that increase the value of the people who are already there? If it if the answer is yes, then you have increasing labor returns on labor. That's also saying that labor is that 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 the workers complement each other, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas decreasing returns on labor, what would that mean? That means that each time a new person is added, the sort of value of in, of the other people goes down. Okay, and similarly, you have increasing returns on capital and decreasing returns on capital. Okay, uh, what do you you usually expect? In like real world situations, you expect that eventually you'll have decreasing returns on everything, labor, capital, etc. Because 
there's technological limitations, etc. Uh, and uh, they, they could be complement subjects. But now I want to talk about one interesting thing, which is you can have combined returns on labor and capital could be better than the returns on labor and capital individually. What do I mean by that? So I'm, I'm saying the combined returns on labor and capital you increase them simultaneously. Yeah, if you increase them simultaneously and proportionally, that could give you increasing returns. Even if the even if individually increasing them doesn't give you increasing returns. Right? So individually you may hit decreasing returns, but if you are increasing them simultaneously in a particular proportion, then you then the combined returns could be positive. And there's actually some very simple examples of this using what are called Cobb Douglas production functions, which uh, which we talk about maybe in the next video, but but the idea with those you can actually work out very concretely what what these partials are and what the what the what the returns are when they are complementary when they are substitute. Uh, one thing I want to say is that it's it's a very important question whether you have increasing returns on labor or not. It's sort of related to this whole question of whether when you have more people in when you have more people in the world when you have more people in a city does that make each individual wealthier or you know, it's all related to that question and and those people who believe in like the advantages of more population would generally say you have increasing returns because each new person adds to the value of other people and those who who are more pessimistic would say you have decreasing returns because every new person uh, crowds the world of the other person so uh, so, so 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 this is a really interesting question to think about in, in different situations, you have different answers.